What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Those Who Geek podcast. Today, we are reviewing The Batman. That's right. And I am, of course, here joined with the Those Who Geek crew. I've got the man who is being, Nate, got being on your shirt. You're a human being. Is he? I'm upset. <laughs> so many technical difficulties has put Nate in not a good mood. And like then the old we, days. <laughs> we have the man who kills McDonald's uh, burgers like I kill criminals. So not at all. <laughs> yeah. That He's would Batman, be the one who's oh, too logical, hey. Kalen. Sorry. Look at all his clothing. <laughs> hey, dude, don't forget to shout out little Elbu. Little little Elbu there in uh in the arms looking dead. He literally <laughs> looks we should put a clip uh, of in the arms of the name. So, so the way we most time do these, uh, do these is they are for spo spoiler filled, and we do surface level thoughts, and we go dip deeper. What I wanted to try today, and this is I didn't I didn't say this to anybody, but what I wanted to try is to do surface level thoughts, spoiler free first, okay. and then we'll get into surface level. So let's start off with our spoiler free surface level thoughts of the. Batman. Bum, 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 bum. I'm Kaylin, sure everybody with headphones think? really love that. I, I'm sure they loved it. <laughs> Kaylin, what do you think of The Batman? Spoiler free. I thought it was Maze Balls. Maze Balls. That's it. It was Maze Balls. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. That's very surface level. I like it. Thank you. Nate? <laughs> it was really good. Um, Soundtrack was great. It was shot very well. Acting was really good. Writing was tight for the most part. Story was interesting. I thought pacing was great. Yeah, man, there's like very, very few nitpicky things that I could say against it, but it was great. I liked it a lot. I recommend it. It was awesome. Cool. Danny. I thought it was good. There's, like, a lot of things that bothered me a little bit, but at the same time, like, understanding what point in time this is for Batman, I, 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 I understand those points. I thought it was good, though. Like, I, I'd watch it again. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> I enjoyed this movie quite a bit. I'm still processing it. It is a lot to take in, at least for me. Uh, I am very excited to go see it again. And I, but like, I, I would recommend this movie. Like, this is an easy recommend uh, to anybody who likes superhero movies, especially DC fans. So this is just, yeah, recommend, solid movie, great. All right, spoiler free. So now this is spoiler filled time. That's right. Batman dies. Uh, let's get into the spoilers here. Um, <laughs> but before we do that, I'd like to tell you about our sponsors. Just kidding. We have no sponsors. We're uh, not cool enough, yeah. <laughs> I'd like, uh, so we're going to, sorry, rewinding. The Batman had a budget of $200 million, of course, directed by Matt Reeves. And as of now, the projected opening weekend is $120 million. But Friday. At worldwide or, Amer or American? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's just American. Mm, I thought I read. I might be wrong, but I thought it was only that. like 40 million for well, America. 57 million was just on Friday. Oh, okay. That's my. That's probably what I read then. Never mind. Yeah. So it's looking pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. Um. But yeah, let's get it. Let's let's uh, let's geek out over this movie let's let's pull it apart let's dissect it let's see uh more yeah, of those worldwide. Uh, rata with sorry. Allahs. sorry to interrupt but worldwide it's already at 248 million 500 200 yeah just a lot a lot it's a lot they've already recouped the money of <clears throat> making the movie for mm -hmm. sure um who wants to go first like what, what do you guys want to talk about like it's kind of just a open well, like, let's just converse. we should talk about maybe like uh, 
So you guys know I have mom brain seriously. Like there are words that I cannot remember and this is another word that I just cannot remember right now. But like through each thing like like the soundtrack and then the okay. characters and the soundtrack. acting. Soundtrack. Soundtrack. What would you guys think of the soundtrack? Because for me, I'm sorry, I'm going to take this over. I freaking <laughs> adored this soundtrack. This is probably no, definitely the best Batman Batman soundtrack. In my opinion, it might be the best superhero soundtrack. In my opinion, it might be one of my favorite soundtracks of all time. It's freaking amazing. I love this soundtrack. Like, if that's all the movie did right, I'd be happy. It's just they do the just the bomb, bomb, bomb. It's just so imposing and powerful and simple that it gets stuck in your head and it's perfect. And then they've got the something in you in the way by Nirvana, which they played in the trailers. And I was really hoping that it was going to be in the movie, and it was, and it Twice. was in there a lot, and I loved it. I feel like for some reason that song, especially or just like Nirvana in general, really fits the vibe of this movie, and I thought it was a really great fit. What did you guys think? I thought, I think like if I could only pick like one soundtrack and score to listen to for the rest of my life, I'd probably pick this one because I really enjoyed it. The only problem I had, and it's kind of the only problem I had with the entire movie, was the sc the score. So in the scenes that I feel like were long scenes, not necessarily bad that they were long, but when they were long, they would repeat the same score the whole time. And sometimes it'd be kind of just the same tune over and over and over again. And when I would like focused on that it bothered me a lot because it was it was annoying it could be like the same sound for like 10 minutes so that's the only thing i didn't like but i liked the the sounds i just got annoyed with like hearing it repetitively within the same scene for such a long time but mm -hmm. i really enjoyed it cool what what did the other gentlemen think all right denny so this soundtrack is actually, I agree with Winnie <clears throat> that it is the best Batman soundtrack so far. And I, I, w I don't know about superhero soundtrack though, uh, because you can hear how good it is that makes him seem like that vigilante. And you, this soundtrack is just the most important parts of the film and the tone that these soundtracks has with it. Like, it just fits perfectly. And yeah, there were a lot of those times where it's like, it just repeats that same little loop right there. While there's like a conversation going where like a long part of the movie is going. And it's, you know, yeah, when you focus on it, it's just a little bit repetitive. Uh, but you know, yeah, it's, it's the best soundtrack for a Batman film. What'd you think, Nate? I thought it was great. Um, I do, th I think after thinking about it more, I think it is better than the dark knight soundtrack which is probably the next best batman mm -hmm. soundtrack because it has that super just memorable just main theme which is really great really fits the movie and it was used expertly in this film and then it also just has you know like that nirvana cover nirvana cover was super super awesome you know it, it fit the, the the universe that Matt Reeves is building very well. You know that eerie eerie sound was great. Really, really like the soundtrack and the sound design in general. Um, I'm gonna kind of throw the sound design in here as well. Like the sound design for like Batman just walking into scenes with the footsteps is just like mm. so menacing. And yeah, especially with like, the with his footsteps, it's just like. Yeah, it just seems like a monster is about to enter. Yeah, the room. it's, it's like it feels awesome. like uh, the slasher is coming in mm -hmm. in the slasher movie, and it's just really, really good. This is yeah. So, and there's so many other smaller sound design moments like that that are really, really, really good. So I, I liked the the soundtrack and the music and the sound a ton. It was great. Mm -hmm. Oh man, let me uh, the car. You know, oh my god. The car that had such right. a unique that's why you know it's crazy that after so many Batman movies, there's still such a fresh take on the Batman. Like almost in every aspect. Cause like the car 
it's not i liked it a lot i think the jet engine was a little too whiny for my specific taste but still it like it just adds to the ominous you know it's like you just got that freaking like jet whine going on and and they sit on that sound for such a long time and it's great and then you just get that deep rumble of whatever engines in there and it's just great man and that, that, that the, first introduction with just the little red lights and then you just see the, the engine heating up oh my god i wish and, i could hear that car in real life like it would give me chills just like the instant it turned on it'd be like yeah like oh instantly that turned so on good. right <laughs> and the whole sound sound design for that whole chase scene is just great man it's just great I want to get back to that chasing, but of course, but later. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree. The sound design in this movie is freaking fantastic. But I what... mean, since we are already in that subject, that Batman car, though. Okay. Yeah. Go. What did you think of the car? I hated. I hated that body of a Chevy chassis. I hated that. That's the stupidest choice ever. Uh, yeah, it is. Um, kind of disgraceful. I can't tell. <laughs> if, is it like a, a cut? -up? It's a Corvette. Charger, it's a, Cor a Corvette. It's a Corvette. He, he drives a Corvette to the um, to the uh, funeral. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so I'm guessing it's similar. Okay. So if you see that top part of the car, that one is like the Chevy design. Uh, for that little Corvette that leads to the engine in the back, that little back side, that's the mm -hmm. Chevy as well. The bottom part, I think that's a Charger design. So I think like they fused those two top parts. The bottom of it being. Yeah. A a charger and then the top being a chevy <clears throat> disgraceful um, but i like it more it's the tumbler in the dark knight right mm -hmm. i like it more than a tumbler mm -hmm. <clears throat> but i can't remember which animated there's an animated batmobile that just looks so sleek and so good that i think i still like more but it still fits this universe so well you know mm -hmm. like the grittiness and the you know he built it himselfness and just like the sound, it's just great, man. I feel like it fits with his age too. Like he's probably supposed to be like late twenties ish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. it just like I, it looks like something that somebody in their mid to late twenties would pick out of like a line of, honestly, the Batman cars probably. Like mm -hmm. it just, I liked it. I thought it looked really cool. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. yeah. And like one thing that I like loved about it is that early on in the film you see how much of a gearhead he is because he has all the parts lined up perfectly of like, okay, this is where I have to start from. And like, he goes down on it and they show it exclusively. Like, I feel like that was like specifically meant for gearheads. Just like, this is your cup of tea. Like, you'll love how organized he is with this. I gotta make you believe that, you know, mm -hmm. he's doing it. So they did that really well. I, I bet he uh, he's missing a 10 millimeter as well, but you know. The size of point. <laughs> I guarantee you he's not. <laughs> He'll buy <laughs> another one. Uh, okay, so something I, I kind of wanted to talk about before we get like really into the to the. You had no the thoughts on movie. the Batmobile. No, not on the Batmobile, but it's on something like that's a little bit most of the time put to the side. But I think they did really well in this movie, and I think we should talk about it. Is Gotham City? Mm -hmm. I think they did Gotham City in this movie really well. It felt like I a really, real city <laughs> to me. Like it felt real. Yeah. And also I think they did a really good job of capturing the vibe of, you know, still having gothic styles in there, but also having that that just like techno technological aspect just kind of plastered on. The way that I kind of envisioned Gotham is in the comics too, where it's like this is old and beat and like beaten down city and it has that timeless vibe but it's also super technologically advanced as well and they just kind of like they don't really want to put the money into making anything new so they just shove the the technology stuff on top of it i think they did really good and there's a lot of storytelling that's just done in the background and with this environment i thought mm -hmm. that was done really well what do you guys think if you guys have anything to say about it i i mean like like i said like it, it had a lot of very like it took I can tell they obviously took a lot from like New York, like New York vibes and everything. Like they even had like <clears throat> the Times Square looking area of the city. And I think that that really helped it, like helped me just like it just didn't feel like a city that didn't exist. Like it felt like 
it felt like New York, so it felt more real to me. I don't know. I thought it looked really cool. You did the since you mentioned the the gothic vibes. How did you I hope it's okay if I ask a question, but how did you guys feel about like the mansion? Because that yeah. felt Wayne very Manor. intensely like <laughs> like yeah. gothic style. It kind of was a little bit overwhelming to me. Like when I first saw I think it was the room where Alfred was like sitting at the breakfast table. I was kind of like I was super overwhelmed with like the architecture and, and like the set design and everything. And I was kind of I don't I don't know how to feel about it because it just felt mm -hmm. it fit, but it was also like I wouldn't live there. <laughs> like I would not just be comfortable living in there. It didn't feel like a home. Mm. It felt strange. So, that's the interesting part for me that a lot of the Batman films that we see, it's all centered in the Wayne Mansion. And here we see how they went with the storyline of him selling the Wayne Mansion and making it an orphanage, or someone selling the Wayne Mansion and making it an orphanage, and him living in Wayne Manor instead of the mansion. Wayne Tower. <laughs> Wayne Tower. And honestly, I, I liked the tower idea, but yeah, that gothic design that they had inside of it, just like very, very Dracula feeling to it. Mm -hmm. It fit him as a character, but it did feel weird actually seeing it live. I was like, I don't yeah, feel like I, Alfred would like this. Just kidding. <laughs> no, that's, that's exactly where I'm at. I'm like, for me, I think the architecture style matched the type, the type of vibe they were going for. And I kind of understand why Bruce Wayne would be in that kind of environment, you know, someplace that didn't feel like home, but it was Especially more like this Bruce Wayne yeah like that makes sense for him but the thing i couldn't buy is like okay why would this architecture be in a new like w like skyscraper like that's the thing i couldn't buy if this was in wayne wayne mansion and we saw that architecture in wayne mansion i'd be like that makes perfect sense and i can totally buy that that's that's perfect but since it's inside of wayne tower that's a thing that i'm like i don't I don't know it kind of just doesn't fit you know because like you think that on floor above them there would be like offices and stuff like that it's like this is weird you know it's it's like mm -hmm. a disconnect but is what it is so i got um, myself confused so it's wayne tower it wasn't wayne mansion yeah because no. you remember well, when the bomb that at all <laughs> the bomb explodes and it pans to the tower like the top of the tower yeah, smoking i still did not put two and two together yeah i forgot to because it does look a lot like Wayne Manor as opposed to some building. Mm -hmm. yeah, no. um, I thought Gotham was great. It looks so terrible, you know, in a good way. <laughs> Reminded me a lot of um, Joker, the Joker film. Yes, yeah. And it looked like that. It was great. I love that we almost exclusively saw it at night. I love that they went for almost all the old school type of lighting, which is the orange, orange street lights. You know, it just mm -hmm. also helps sell that mood that it's old. They did mm -hmm. such a good job. Like, it's modern day, mm -hmm. but it feels like it's the 90s or older, you yeah. know? And it's like when you see the taxis driving around, they're like 70s, 60s cars. And it's just, yeah, it's so moody. And it just, mm -hmm. it's great. It's awesome. And I liked how with like the technology technology stuff is that you know how in uh the dark night we see like you know like almost like close to holograph hologram like projections and stuff like that where it's like it's getting really technolo technological and everything with this batman it's very much like plug in knobs all this like different kind of thing where it's much more um and how analog analog is the word i'm thinking of but they still had like the the camera on the islands and everything so it is advanced but it's also and very and his suit is very much like that too yeah oh my gosh let's get into the suit holy <laughs> crap i i think we should uh before we get into this i think we should talk about bruce wayne himself before we get into the man in the suit sure go ahead I'm not gonna I, wait. I, I i just first thing that i feel about this bruce wayne I don't like him as a Bruce Wayne. No, I really do I. don't. I, <laughs> I really hated his Bruce Wayne. Mm -hmm. And I think the one who like made him like the or made Bruce Wayne the best Bruce Wayne was Christian Bale. Mm -hmm. Because he was actually that business suave guy that was like, okay, he has money, he knows he has it, he can flaunt it, but he knows he's he knows what he has to do. 
this Bruce Wayne, you can tell like how much he just didn't care about being a Wayne. Mm-hmm. And it, well, it bothered me to a point. I, I don't. I wouldn't say that. It's obvious how much he doesn't care about appearances. You know. Yeah, I mean, but it makes sense. Like with his age, like right now, is it's like, like the Christian Bale Batman. I can't recall much of those movies because I haven't seen them since I was like a kid. But it's like he yeah, missed out. I mean, I know. I should have watched it before this movie just so I could compare, but I did not do that. It's just like, he, that Batman, that Bruce Wayne would have had to learn. Like, he couldn't just, like, like magically know, like, what he was doing. Um, and you, I feel like I can tell in this Batman, hopefully, in the sequels, they're going to show him changing more into the Bruce Wayne that we're supposed to know. But it makes sense for his age and, like, like just his mental state of like, no, I don't want to be social. I just want to focus on the stuff that I'm focusing on. Like my name, it matters, but like he didn't know anything. Like he learned so much about his family and the company and like the business and everything. So I don't know. I really liked this Bruce Wayne. I don't know, again, if I necessarily liked him as Bruce Wayne, but I, I liked this character a lot like but, if this yeah was but that's, character... that's what we're talking about we're yeah. talking about him as bruce wayne i i do i do like him as bruce wayne but i know that a lot of this is a big problem that a lot of people have is it doesn't feel like they're bruce wayne <laughs> i can't do that sorry <laughs> <laughs> you guys did it in this exact oh, same really? time that's yeah. awesome <laughs> so here's what i think i i like him as bruce wayne and i agree with what kaylin said where i think he's on his way to becoming the more well-known established version of bruce wayne that we know but you know this is just my understanding of this film um martha has you know uh, has uh, his mother has a a history of mental illness and that's something that a lot of people talk about that like oh batman's crazy because he dresses up like a bat and punches people to death or not to death near death and like okay so there's like okay maybe he is a little twisted like or he's just a little unbalanced like his mom was and then if you think of somebody like that like all he cares about is being batman and saving the city that way and this version of batman doesn't see the benefit of being the playboy of you know pretending to be all these things and i buy it i buy you know it would it would I don't know if it would have fit as well or if it would have been as good in this story for him to be, you know, showing up at the cocktail parties and like coming with two two supermodels and buying the bar. And it's very much Bruce Wayne's always been the like, oh, that's just the act he puts on. But like this Bruce Wayne doesn't even want to do that. Like he doesn't want to show up for board meetings. He doesn't even want to think about anything that doesn't have to do with saving the city and being Batman. Part of it too is I don't feel like it's even like that he necessarily wants it. When you see how this character interacts with other people, he is so awkward. Like every person, so even as Batman, like he's so quiet and just like straight I, to the point. And it's just like that really plays into like the mental illness part of it is like he must have some something that he's dealing with or he's just super socially awkward. And I feel like it would just take him time to get there or not at all if that's the way that they want to go with Bruce Wayne. But I And I think it's good because we've all seen that version of Bruce Wayne, the Playboy version of Bruce Wayne. And I think this one just adds a little bit extra to the character. And it'd be, I think it's more interesting to see, we have to see if that's the decision they make, but it'd be more interesting to see him going from this version of Bruce Wayne to the playboy version that we're going to see hopefully in the next movie or the one after Mm -hmm. my thing is though yes you're right it for this story it's it wouldn't have much benefit and i think they made i guess the good decision on that but that still doesn't make him a good bruce wayne it makes him a good batman it means that bruce wayne is like almost non-existent in this world you know it is just the batman or which uh or vengeance they, as he calls which himself they establish because 
every time they talk about Wayne and Bruce Wayne, they talk about like nobody's seen this guy. Like this uh -huh. guy is like a hermit that just hangs out. Exactly. So and something I wanted to talk about since you brought it up, uh, I guess we'll put it in here is I, I don't know how I feel. Like I really, really like the aspect that they made the mom crazy. And that also of course is an Easter egg to the mom actually becoming the Joker in Flashpoint. But what do you, Nate, especially Nate, uh, how did you feel about uh, the Arkhams, the Waynes and the Arkhams? That has been touched on in other storylines. I think it's another comic. Um, you know, uh, I was talking to Diego after the film, and he said that, or Diego or Wesley, well, one of them said that they liked that because it helps to explain like how the Waynes have so much clout. And it's because the two founding families of the city, the Hatfields and the McCoys, although they weren't enemies, had a son together who then inherited all the money of both families and kind of help. Exp this is just background stuff, but it helps explain how he's so rich and how he has so much pull and all, all these things. And it's kind of more just headcanon, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, I have no problem with it. There's, Like I said, I'm not super aware, but there's been other comics where the Arkhams and the Arkham family you know, one have married before. Like, dude, that's another thing this movie did very well. It pulls so much inspiration from so many different Batman storylines. Oh, yeah. And like Flashpoint, well, well, yeah, with the mom being un unbalanced. Mm -hmm. And I, I'll, I'll get through the list of everything else. There's, there's a lot. Yeah. But it didn't, I liked it. I, I thought it was interesting. Uh, and like I said, it helped, it helped inform why bruce is the way that he is yeah before this movie came out i was i was we were talking about expectations for it and i was saying that i really hope that they go especially i was talking to danny i was like i really hope they go the route with the telltale you know where they're because it also said sins of his father and everything and i was yep. like okay yeah his dad or his parents were actually bad people and they were involved with the mob and everything so it brings this conflict of okay i'm be being batman and i'm cleaning up the city for my parents but then he realizes his parents weren't good people and they weren't cleaning up the city it was all it was all a lie then he's like okay then why am i being batman it adds conflict that character and it's so interesting this is one of the points in the movie where i feel like it felt very flat where it's one of the points in the movie where they didn't take enough risk, in my opinion. And the other one is with Alfred, where it's just like, okay, you guys set this up, and then you kind of just like, eh, nah. I'm like, why? Just go the rest. It makes things so much interesting if you just go 100%. Like with Alfred, okay, he's hurt. Ah, but no, no, he's still alive. Oh, yeah, all this, uh, I'm just believing this person and that person. They said that my parents did this, and they said that my parents did that. Oh, Alfred said no. No, they, they were good people. Okay. It's like, but, no. like, why not just go 100%, kill Alfred, or make his parents actually, were they, they supported the mob and everything. So his parents, he'll never know. Because even knowing this Bruce Wayne, honestly, any version of Bruce Wayne, he's not just going to believe Alfred. Alfred can say whatever he wants to. He's not going to believe him. So that is a conflict that he is deciding to, like, I'm going to be Batman anyway. Because even though Alfred said, oh, this is what really happened, your dad didn't do this, or it wasn't as bad as you think it was. It's like, he doesn't know that, and he's never going to just believe Alfred like that. Him forgiving Alfred is different of with him believing Alfred. Sure. So this Wayne, and I think the director said it too, this Bruce Wayne will never know what really happened with his parents. He'll never know. He'll never know if Falcone was right. He'll never know if Alfred was right. And uh, odds are, like, with e every lie and secret, you know, it's, it's somewhere in, in the middle. And you're right. They didn't... I don't think it fell flat, that specific aspect. And they did kind of try and let the audience know that, like, this is a huge problem for Bruce. Mm -hmm. But, like, you're right. I feel like they could have done better showing how much this mess could have messed with him but who knows this that could have been a decision to where at this point bruce doesn't even care that much like he's upset about it but instead of feeling like oh why am i batman maybe now he's just feeling i need to fix this 
you know, like he's Batman, whether he wants to or not. The thought of not being Batman isn't a thought in his head at all. It's just, oh, now I have to fix this. Mm -hmm. And he clearly, this Batman has no, this version of Bruce and Batman, like it has no, no chill. (laughs) Because it's like, oh, you did a bad thing then you're bad. It's that simple. There's no excuses. Like once you reach a certain level of bad thing, you are just a bad person. Um, with, I don't know. I, I like Alfred and I like this version of Alfred. I don't think I would have hated it if they killed Alfred, but it would have felt like, man, they killed him so quick, you know, so early, so fast. Um, so I'm kind of glad they didn't kill him. I think that, when i think it was kind of needed to have that scare for bruce because like he talked about it to alfred you know like i haven't been afraid of really anything since my parents died and you i was afraid that you were dead and that you were going to die and i feel like it kind of kind of kicked him back into reality a little bit because i feel like he was so just like focused on doing what he needed to do that he forgot like that Alfred was there, that other people were around him and other people can get hurt. So I just feel like that was something that was kind of needed. But I also see where you're coming from with like wanting to just like, like, like go the whole way with w- one thing or the other. I, I can see what, what you're talking about. I, I'm just personally glad they didn't kill Alfred because <laughs> I just feel like in this movie at that point we hadn't gotten enough of him to really care. Like it would have been like, Oh, the Alfred character died. That's horrible. I yeah. wish they didn't do that. But at that point, we hadn't gotten enough of him that I probably would have been like, yeah, but I didn't. I didn't care. Yeah, it would. I feel like it would have been just more annoying and cheap. Yeah. Than yeah. truly yeah. heartfelt. Like yeah. when it happened, Alfred. I was like, really? Like that was my initial reaction to like when it blew up because I thought like. Especially when the old lady, the older lady told him, like, oh, it was too late, you know, it already happened, blah, blah, blah. And they really made you believe that he was just dead. I wish they didn't do that because that felt cheap, like making us feel like he was dead. You know. Let's go let's but. go back to that point really quickly. When that old lady picked up the phone, she was so casual about it. It was like She was Hello? weird. Hey. Oh, it's too late. Like it felt oh, like man, she happened. did it. Like I was like, is this old lady? bad <laughs> it, 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 it really makes you like see how in gotham this is another tuesday <laughs> it's like oh yeah it, it happened two hours ago sorry you missed it uh we would have we would have saved you a seat please call us another uh, time <laughs> and uh you know what i think you know, robert pattison like his performance in this movie was just killer man the like, sideways yeah and <laughs> non-existent <laughs> yeah Um, that part where he's rushing back to Wayne Tower you see that seriousness you only see those his eyes are the thing that like cause you to like see more of the seriousness that's going on here and you see that perfectly with him like he's trying like he's trying to get that call through he's trying to get it through then as soon as he sees that little bit of smoke like he just like you can see how he realizes all of that like he it's actually you're in there with them. That's what I felt as soon as I saw his facial expression with that. It was kind of funny. I was telling Nate last night um, because I, I've seen the Twilight movies and there was a lot of scenes specifically that there were, it was kind of copies of certain scenes that of him in Twilight. And so every time those scenes would come up, I'd be like, that's Edward. Like that was just my like <laughs> thinking during the movie. And but I'm I'm really glad that he was he was the Batman. I was so excited when they announced him back in like 2019 or something and everybody was like like uh, anybody that was that had only seen him in Twilight or only heard of him from that as that character were, were really hateful and like against it. But I knew. I knew even back then. I was like he's got to do a good job. He's going to do great. <laughs> I saw all the Twilight movies. I saw his performance in there, and that I was very nervous for him. Yeah, he put, he phoned it in for a lot of those movies because his performance is not good. But yeah. I've seen him in other movies like The Lighthouse and Tenant, and he freaking kills it. So I I wasn't worried either about his performance. I uh, I was worried, but I was pretty much sold after that first opening scene. 
of him with the with the missioner. The, the no with the gang. gang. Yeah, with the gang. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember. But my criticism towards him is, I still feel like he's too small. He should he should have beefed mm-hmm. up a little more. He looks fine in the suit. Yeah, he looks fine in the suit, but it's when he doesn't have the suit on. Yeah, he doesn't look right. I agree. Yeah, and uh, like there was like those, a... there was those reports of him being like, "Oh no, I'm not going to go to the gym or anything," and I might. No, those were fake. The gym. No, no, I found out that those that was just him playing. So he was just playing oh, with okay. the media. There's a there's something that I sent Winnie actually, of like a little bit of a, like behind the scene things, that. This version of Batman is focusing on, you know, strength and speed, not much more, like, muscle toning. And honestly, I like that version of him, like, being that slim, kind of, like, I can still beat the crap out of you. Mm. Instead of, like, being Ben Affleck, like, super, like, just... Ben Affleck was, like, too big to me. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. he was awesome. I loved it. I felt In like the he... suit, he looked great, but he kind of looked... And the suit, he looked, he looked horrible just because he looked like a drunk uncle in the barbecue. Like, that's how he looked like to me. Just in that suit, that looked like it. <laughs> like, that's how it looked like. And, you know, this version, Robert Pattinson's version, he looks sleek. He looks amazing. And that mobility that he had... You can hear how heavy that suit is supposed to sound. And he's, like, flying through people. And he sweats literally... like crazy. <laughs> one of one of my favorite one of my favorite parts of the movie is when uh, is when they're in the in the cell and it's him and Gordon, mm-hmm. and Gordon's just like, bah. like, come on, let's talk about this. And I love that little. Bah. <laughs> it was great. And then afterwards, he's like, all right, you gotta hit me. And then he hits him. And he's like, you at least could have pulled your punch. He's like, I did. I did. I was like, <laughs> oh, how was hard good. is this? I punched. Dang. I know. Uh, um, I like the bat suit a lot. Um, honestly, I feel like I didn't like his collar. Mm, I understand why it's there, but I don't like it. And then I feel like the bat symbol should just be a little cleaner. I felt a little busy in the bat symbol. I didn't, I didn't really like that. That was a weapon, wasn't it? It was great. Which is meant to be like a symbol. That that felt kind of dumb. I feel like, why wouldn't you just have a knife? (laughs) I agree. I agree. There were... it, uh, that again, none of this really bothers me that much. They're just tiny little nitpicks, but like everything else about the suit reminded me a lot of the Arkham City suit, just mm-hmm. with matte matte coating instead mm-hmm. of a uh, satin coating. Mm-hmm. Looked great. Looked great. Well, Love it awesome. makes more sense for like his character to have that, like not to have the shininess. Like he'd stick out. Oh yeah, I agree. I think, I think this Gotham. looks. I think it looks better matte than it did in Arkham. Also, his helmet, his cowl. Is again like basically straight out of the Earth One Batman storyline, just the hard leather leather seam. And that's cowl. I think for me, that's the only part of the suit I don't like is the the cowl because you can like see the stitching and everything, and I just feel like it looks weird. I don't know how they would have fixed that and how it would made of how they would have made it look right for me. But something about the like the forehead section always looked kind of strange to me but it's nothing that i couldn't get around I, I still love 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 this suit um especially when there's like i was like throughout the movie i was like he uses his utility belt more than any other batman and then he's got the freaking grapple thing right there and then like then we would get to the part where uh you know catwoman's being beat up and he injects himself and there's like a little port for him to inject himself it's it's designed perfectly right. it's so Man. so good it's the batman who always has a plan like that's so awesome and we also like yeah bringing back to that point of what winston just said that little toxin that he has there me and him are going like back and forth of it of like is this a bane toxic or is this just like an adrenaline rush and i feel like this is the bane toxin that he modifies to give him that extra extra adrenaline rush because you know that's like a perfect that's a perfect fit for that that little port that he has there. It's not an accidental thing. It's not like a little shot that he ejects his in the arm with. It's perfectly put in place there for a reason. And I feel like, you know, in this point in his um, career as a Batman, two years in, they said, you know, he's still experimenting with the suit. He's still, like, fiddling around with it. And, yeah, you're right. He uses his utility belts much more than anyone else. The one thing that pissed me off the most about his suit was the flight part. 
like how he made it that jumper suit like because it looks so ghetto <laughs> that's why it looked very ghetto He's not it's like it looks like all the time, roofs all the time yeah. exactly <laughs> no and like i said like you we can tell this is the early part of his career as a batman so you know this is prototype think, that he's using i think matt reeves is just like committed to like realism yeah yes. and it's hard and more than that's they why. always talk about like oh realistic batman but this is like legit realist and you know that one part there where he jumped off that roof like that like that made me feel more like this isn't bruce wayne and this isn't batman's iq because no one would have pulled the parachute court right before, right bridge. before the bridge that, yeah yeah like, even that me who's he not that smart it, i wouldn't like, pull it like he I mean, could have like, pulled that... it earlier on but mm-hmm. he probably say... noticed the bridge was like oh crap i gotta do it now or this guy, you know <laughs> this guy is like bruce willis unbreakable because like he freaking clo- gets clotheslined by like a bridge and a bus and then hits the concrete no problem and then gets freaking literally blown up this far away from him no problem yeah the guy is like unbreakable gets shocked I know, and the thing is, like, he doesn't even have, like, a broken bone or anything. I know, you right? Know? He's not even limping. He's just like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> That's something I talked but, to Nate about today was, like, it's so weird how he unhuman he is that he, low-key, Batman does have superpowers, honestly. Yeah. So like, there he was, has to. <laughs> there was a TikTok that someone made of, like, they brought it up with the cartoon versions of Batman of, like, he gets thrown through, like, solid boxes. He's been taking beatings from Bane for years, and he can deliver those punches back to him without the toxins. And yeah, that's an arguable point right there that Batman has yeah. superpowers. Just he has never said he has. <laughs> um, <clears throat> man, I forgot what I was gonna say. I'm Dang. sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, it's Catwoman. Catwoman. Oh, oh, that's what it was. Hey. Actually, hold on one second. I think for me back to the bane toxin thing is that that's kind of one of the things that it's for me one of the best things about the movie and one of the worst things about the movie at the same time where there's so many things in this movie that is just headcanon you know the bane tox that that toxin is it adrenaline is a bane toxin no answers bane toxin is called venom yes venom but that could be confused with the terrible marvel uh, standalone movie called venom the the uh spider-man villain but anyways uh it's there's not also a standalone because it has a sequel so whatever you're, you're... and it's also it's been tied right. into other the movies sequel doesn't exist in winston <sighs> it doesn't the first one and it's exist. also a good movie. anyways uh then there's also like uh they hinted at um riddler being actual like a stepbrother of of bruce wayne which they never answer. They 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 like hint like no 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 that wasn't the case. But there's you know could be. And then there's like the hush thing that that's. And then there's there's like so many things that are just like theories that they're like the movie's continually hinting at you, but they never give you any answers. So you have to make up these head cannons. And it's like on one side it's really cool because there's so many things in this movie, but it's also kind of frustrating because they don't give you any of these answers i really funny. don't i really don't think that's a negative because the story they tell is fully cohesive and they wrap up their story and all this other stuff is just it's just gravy man it's just extra stuff that they want to show later so i don't think you can take it away from the movie because it wants to involve other aspects of the universe when those those don't really have anything to do with the current story. Um, I feel like Riddler potentially being related to Bruce is just a red herring. I feel or, like that's something. Go ahead. Or, or there was also like since there was the the hush thing, there could have also been. Uh, uh, there was the other theory that Riddler is the son of the photographer, which mm-hmm. was the Elliot family. So he would be Elliot in this universe. Yeah. I forgot his first name, but. No, it's Nashton, I think. It's uh, Edward Nashton instead of Nigma. Yeah, and again, going back to that point of like early on in his career, and he's already taken a lot of these people out of the board. Um, like and you, Joker, which has already been confirmed. Yeah, and you know we can see like those cells are perfectly in a circle. We don't see who else is in there, 
and you know the whole easter eggs that they put in there of which characters could be in here and which couldn't uh just with those little easter eggs that they put with hush being um yeah with hush being the riddler and you know mr holiday being two-faced you know he's probably there they kind of hinted at that a little bit just because they mentioned something about that like a killer in the like a killer in each season or something is what they said um I don't know. It's just so much that they can do with the storyline moving forward, and I love that part. I did hate that there were just like a, two things I think that didn't close out completely, and that's the only thing that kind of bothered me. But I, obviously, I can't remember it, so it didn't bother me much. Uh, but like to your to your uh, point, Nate, is that they didn't need to uh, talk about these things. But I'm like, all right, with the Bane serum though, if that is Bane serum. Like, he used that in a very critical moment. So you'd think that there would at least be a hint of something. Be like, oh, did you take the adrenaline with you? Did I restock your adrenaline in your utility belt? Or something to help us realize that that is what it is in that scene. Because that's a super important scene. And him just stabbing something in. Yes, we get the point, but it doesn't make it... We don't get the, the uh, I guess, the emotion behind it. I don't know. I feel like it would have made it much... There would have been logic behind mm. what happened, you know? Yeah. It's just a uh, director choice. I think it's fine. I do think it could have been interesting if they did say, like, oh, you know, he's using Venom and that can kill him. And there would have been an extra em emotion in that scene. But I don't know if it was necessary. You know, I think it's got to be something because he's so obviously, the, the direction is so obvious it highlights the vial so much and it's such a bright green. And then he, he doesn't just get a boost of energy. He just, he gets rageful. Yeah. And it's like, I just feel like the director's like, I'm not going to hold, this doesn't really matter to this specific story. And I don't want to hold my audience's hand. Like it's pretty obvious what this is. So mm -hmm. that and should the, be enough. The other thing I have that it might be Bane serum is that like, a few minutes after that, he goes and he takes like, which is one of the most expressive scenes in the whole movie where he's just like, ah, and he cuts the cord and then he mm -hmm. goes in the water and he's just like, pops up. He's fine. I'm like, yeah. what? <laughs> he just got like electrocuted hard. This yeah. dude would at least be in the water for a little bit. Like, and that, that was a stadium power. Unrealistic. <laughs> like if you got shocked like that, you couldn't move at all. So yes. Yeah. Well, that's why I think, like, they did the, like, adrenaline shot or something, too, because I was like, he had to have something because there's just no way. Like, even if yeah. superhero, super-powered Batman did that, he probably would have died. So whatever he just took saved his life, and he didn't know it was going to save his life. <laughs> yeah, so and that's, that's another thing that I love about this Batman, is that he's the Batman that is so committed to what he's doing and he's so ready to give his life for this mm -hmm. that it's like every other turn he, they're like this is going to kill you and he's like okay and he just yeah. goes for it you know he kind of wants doesn't to even die think, yeah he kind of wants to die i'm like that is that's so heavy you know and that brings so much weight to this character and it's like it's intense and i like it a lot Wes had the, and this might answer all of our superhuman questions. West had the theory that it could be water from the Lazarus pit. Because in animation, they have also shown that as being green and also making somebody crazy. Mm. See, oh, the in the thing, vial. Oh, yeah. yeah. See, the thing about that is that the Lazarus pit water would make him. It wouldn't make him aggressive only. It'd make him want to kill. Nothing would be able to stop that because we see many people. Yeah, but it's such a small amount. Them. It's such a small amount, one. And mm -hmm. two, it could also explain how he walks away from like clothes lining a bus. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is purely theoretical. Yep. Yeah. I think it's Probably way more. I think it's yeah. way more likely that it's venom as opposed to water from the Lazarus pit. Yeah, because venom I feel like would be easier to make realistic than the Lazarus Pit would. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, even like again, Batman Bruce Wayne is one of the people who, and I mentioned this to Winnie, is that even early on in his career as Batman, he can 
he can modify things. He can create these things. Like he, you can see his touches and everything that he does. Again, going back to the car, we can see that he's making it himself. With his suit, he's adding things and he's added things that we don't see in other Batman suits. Um, so I feel like even if this was Venom or Lazarus Pitwater, he modified it somehow to make him less aggressive. So I, I, can, I can see how this might be Lazarus Pitwater, but I do think it might be Venom more than that. Or it could just be adrenaline. <laughs> or it could just be adrenaline. Yeah. It could just be like six cc's of bang and just as... Um... That's another thing that, like, you were talking about, Danny. It's, like, the, I think the coolest thing about this, as of the Batman, is just how detailed everything is. Mm -hmm. It's so detailed. And that's why I'm, like, it, it's, like, I feel like I haven't captured enough of it, and I need to see it again because of how detailed it is. Um, but, yeah, let's move on to Catwoman. What do you guys think of, of um, Celine Kyle? Selena... Falcone. Zoe Kravitz. <laughs> yes. Beforehand, I got word that somebody said that she and Gordon kind of steal the show and the Batman becomes like a background character, but I didn't get that vibe like at all. I wouldn't agree. And I thought that, I mean, we can obviously, if you guys want to talk about Gordon, we can talk about Gordon later, but like with her, it was like, I I just thought she was really cool and I loved that she wasn't just like this mysterious character that popped up and left like you got her full character her full background and yeah i'll let somebody else talk i just think she was really cool yeah i thought she was great her look is pulled like straight out of year one you know mm -hmm. like the crop top and the pixie cut and the uh the just the look is straight out of year one all, and her relation, great. her relationship with, a of course you do. Her relationship with a a Annika is also something that seems inspired from year I one do. as well. What does that mean, Nate? <laughs> Man, dude, I think that girl that's like in skimpy <laughs> clothing looks so great. <laughs> I think it's a good costume. I think it looks. I think the the like the the mask that would just goes up to here. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I I saw that in the trailer. And I was like, I don't know about that look, but mm -hmm. seeing it more, I was like, yeah, it looks great. Yeah. you know and instead of the the i guess she does wear like the super tight just normal black suit like from arkham but um i don't know i i think i think she looked they, like catwoman and it fit the purpose it should have they didn't really like I, I don't know if accentuate is the right word what's the is it close to that like her her body and her look like it was it there like, like her body was yeah like glorified well, like her body was there but it wasn't like, oh, she has these big boobs, and oh, yeah. look at her. She wasn't over sexualized. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, yeah, like, okay. it could be quite like you could question that a little bit. Like when he's like watching her through the window, she is like, she's obviously getting undressed and dressed and stuff. But, but it's not like, uh, yeah, you know? it's not like, know. oh, she knows ahead. she's being watched. Like it, that was a weird part. It was. In the movie. It was. It was very it, like it made me just feel like Batman was a very big pervert. <laughs> Yeah, he's just sitting outside. I think that's like, on purpose. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, he, he can't come across any other way when he's watching two girls walking around their apartment. Like, yeah. <laughs> he's, you, you just know, turn away for like a few seconds and then check back in a little bit later, then do that again. Yeah, but if and, he did that, he might have missed her going out the window and he might have been like, oh crap, where'd she go? Yeah. Uh, Sorry, uh, going back to what Kaylin said before, where Bruce Wayne was super awkward and everything, yep. I like how they made Batman awkward too, mm -hmm. where he's just like, they ask him questions and he's just like, doing what he does, especially in the first scene where he's like going and looking around the and like oh. investigating, and he even like looks down and he sees the blood and he just looks away, like just like not saying anything to anybody, doesn't even care if people are talking to him, he's doing his job and that's it, and then he's out. Like, I liked that about this Batman too. <laughs> Uh, but back to, to Catwoman, sorry. Yeah, I thought Zoe Kravitz's performance was really good as well. Um, I thought their relationship, I don't know. I didn't fully buy it, but I didn't hate it either. It didn't feel like it was completely unwarranted. It just felt a little forced. Um, but, you know, I think it's fine. And, yeah, I thought her look, I thought her fighting, I thought her backstory, I thought it was great. I think the part where it was the weirdest was the last scene of the movie. 
It's like, what? This is strange. They're like doing like a love motorcycle ride with each other. It's like, okay. And then to it's, end it there, I was like, yeah, that was weird. I honestly liked that a lot more, actually. Because you did, lover boy. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it's no, it's because even in the comic books, even in the TV shows, like everything that we've seen so far about Batman and Catwoman is that there is something that connects them so hard that even a little time together just makes them fall in love or either just makes them be like super tied up that it's like as soon as they separate, it's like this big dramatic thing for him. And I love how they put that into the film. Like she's leaving again and you're not going to have Catwoman. You can just idealize this idea of you and her being together, but it's never going to happen because you're Batman and she's Catwoman. And she, Zoe Gravitz, she played that part perfectly. Like, I loved it. Cool. And, like, I don't think, like, I ever felt, like, a forced part from her. Like, if anything, I felt like she was, like, trying to be detached from him, like, a lot of times. Cool. I think it's hard to see a romantic relationship play out where, like, one of them doesn't yeah. even know who the other person is. Because um, she had no idea he was Bruce Wayne. Like, she didn't know him on, like, a really personal level. Like, she, she got his, like, his awkwardness. And, mm -hmm. like, and his, like, brutality of, like, him being the Batman. But even sometimes it showed that, like, it kind of scared her a little bit because he was kind of scary at some times. Um, so that was just hard for me to believe. But at the same time, they showed them together, like, so much. And just, like, their, like, synergy. Like, it just was lined up. Like, they worked so well together as the Batman and as uh, Catwoman. So, yeah. and the fact that, again, we got so much more of her, like, it was, it was Selena Kyle. It wasn't also, it wasn't just, you know, it wasn't just Catwoman. So, I thought it was. Yeah. Uh, quick side note, I don't, I don't want to, like, talk about him too much, but I think this is the best James Gordon. I like, agree. Mm -hmm. I, th I. When, right when they uh, said who they were casting as him, I was like, uh, really? Like, I, I almost know that they're casting this person so that uh, Batgirl is going to be black instead of a redhead because they have to do it with all the redheads in DC. But I'm like, now looking at it, I'm like, heck, I'm totally down. This, the, the dynamic that they have, that Batman and James and Gordon has in this movie is so cool and i just want to see more it was awesome i loved it the, that little part in the when they're in that cell where you know batman is so aggressive with every cop in there and he you can see the bit of respect that he has for gordon that he's like or i forgot what line that gordon says like oh like you're fighting with cops now you're fighting with like all these cops now he's like do you want to be one of them it's like you can see like how detached he has him from here, but he's not too far off that list. But he still has that respect for him. I love that dynamic. It's not dirty. It felt very yeah, it felt very like fluid with them. Like it didn't feel anything like I don't know why these two would be working. No, like it felt like no. You know what? This works perfectly. Yeah, I really liked how this Gordon trusted Batman more than the cops. I thought that was really cool, and I thought it fit this story very well because usually when we see gordon he's like i'll work with batman but i don't like what he's doing i don't like how he's doing it i just have to because it's the only way and in this one it's like no he knows that like what batman wants and that's what he wants and he's just choosing to go about it his way because he's not batman and i love that they their their dynamic was really good when they're interrogating penguin yeah. That was really good how they're both working through the the riddle and the clues together. And it really feels like, because in most stories, it feels like Gordon's basically useless. And why is he really there? Mm -hmm. He's kind of just like the, he's like a the quest giver. And in this one, it feels like, no, like they're working together and they're helping each other out a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I agreed. Yeah. It did kind of feel like that in the beginning. For me, it, like, because it was just him saying, like, oh, you know what, like, I found this out, go find it out for me. And that whole part where the penguin scene where they're chasing him, like, you can see that he's trying to follow along, too, and at one point, like, he just doesn't. 
but somehow they catch up together and then from that point on they're like always like just right behind each other i really like that and it, it was enjoyable for me to just watch that dynamic actually work out now um what you guys think of uh speaking of the penguin what'd you think of him he was good i hated his height i i think he's too tall i, I thought he think was that... good i love in that scene where they're interrogating him they tie his feet together so he's yeah, waddling he's around like a penguin, penguin. yeah <laughs> um yeah i thought he was good unrecognizable as colin right. first so great great job on his part unrecognizable um, looks like a he, totally different person that they cast yeah but he did super good i thought they're definitely making this penguin dangerous but not really a threat you know, he definitely seems like he's not super intelligent yeah as as a as a crime lord but mm -hmm. um he was good i liked him um one thing i wanted to talk about with him is that one chase scene where everything's blowing up and he's like ah hits the power and then whoop, <laughs> there goes the the ladder the ramp oh Perfect yeah timing i was like wow that was the most <laughs> convenient thing in the whole film <laughs> yep yep uh and not but, yeah, it was yeah. necessary they could have just had him just drive through one one of the trailers right yeah i i feel like i the only way i can justify that is that that was super convenient he got super lucky but he didn't get super lucky when he jumped off the roof so that those balance each other out <laughs> that, that's the only way i could handle it he survived that. falling off the roof somehow too <laughs> that's true that's true and again big props to robert pattinson with his like face scenes because you see that facial expression before he gets really on the like ramp. like Robert Pattinson's he's, face. <laughs> now I do, yeah. <laughs> you see his facial expression right there before he gets on that ramp. He's just like, I don't know what to do here. And then he sees that conveniently placed on him. He's like, all right, let's go. Like, you see that. And it's just, again, props to him for actually doing it, like, perfectly. Yeah, dude, you see gonna... that he's flying by the seat of his pants. I'm going to gush over that chase scene. Um, the chase scene is, is great, and then it really is amazing at the end. Um, that is, uh, They knew that that was the best shot in the whole film. That's why it's in the trailer. And it's, it's just delivered, and it's great. You know, just seeing the upside. So interesting to look at. It's so well composed um, with the music. It's awesome. And, yeah, dude, Batman is legit. He's like a horror. He's like a horror villain. Because he just walks up super slow, and then he just bends down, and just freaking is staring I at him. Bend down was lame. No, bro, it's so it was great. I thought it was great because it's like I've seen in other horror movies where it's like that person is hiding under the bed or hiding under the car, yeah. and then the villain just comes over because they know they're there, and it's just game over. And it's like, it as someone who's watched not a lot of horror movies but have seen some horror movies it's just like mm -hmm. those are the emotions and the feelings that that scene is drawing out and you want that for this batman like that's what they want for this batman is to be freaking afraid of this batman and it just plays so well and the thing that they like the thing that they did super well with that scene was they made you feel afraid of him even though you were already seeing it coming, you saw him walking there and you were so like, I don't know about you guys, but I was just like a, like a little nervous. I was like, what is he going to do? Like, I'm, I'm a little afraid now. Like you just skip the scene a little bit. That's how I felt when I'm watching him walk over slowly. And and it's, walk even, towards you. it's even better. Cause like when you think about just how chaotic that chase was and still Batman's like as cool as ice, just walking up slowly to come and grab you. It's just like, damn, this guy is crazy. <laughs> mm -hmm. there, there's two things I want to uh, segue off of that. <clears throat> I said I thought that was lame. The other time that I thought it was lame was when he was in the uh, in the prison cell, and that scene is so cool. And, or when he goes to see the Riddler, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, and that scene is so cool. But then the Riddler starts singing, and I'm like, this would be so lame without this music. You know that, right? Like, it's him just singing, ah, and just starts singing. It's like, what? 
This is terrible. He's, he's crazy. Uh, I know I, he is. I, I think and I should talk about that. Really, you you are right. Like it would be terrible without the music, but it's not without the music. So it fits I know, great. I know. I know. <laughs> and, and then we'll t- we'll talk about uh, the Riddler here in a second. But also, I want to go back to that fear thing that you were talking about. I feel like this movie does it better than any other Batman movie ever. That fear is so important to Batman. In that first scene, he's like the the villain, the criminals. They all think I'm in the shadows lurking waiting for them like the guy didn't even want to go get a spray can again it's like that is perfect that's what batman is and then the one time they don't they don't think he's in the shadows he is and that's where you look of his footsteps and it's just like oh my god but also like fear in this movie is just perfect because he also has the fear of um losing um his identity no uh well he has the fear of his parents not being what he thought he was but i don't think that was like super scared he has the fear of losing uh uh alfred and that's a real fear that he feels again you know so it's not only people fearing batman but batman fearing as well and then for me in particular i thought segueing into joker uh sorry riddler i thought the riddler was terrifying in this movie like it was like holy crap i didn't think riddler could be this scary like Mm -hmm. and it's mainly for me just because it's like a little too real and you're like dang this could happen yeah like no joke and that's you know i was very very hesitant for riddler being the main villain because yeah like the riddler that he has something that almost not a lot of Batman villains has, which is he plays with Batman's IQ. He plays with his intelligence so much to the point where he's had him guessing at various occasions. And this movie just like brought that up from like a one to a 10 in every single aspect. And because he, when he is right, like there's a lot of things that he does here that it can happen at any single point. And it might be even happening as we speak right now. So you better watch the news. Um, but, you know, when I every time that I think of the Riddler, I think of just like a stupid guy with riddles. And this time, like, I'm like thinking about him like, you know, like this is a smart guy who wants to cause some mayhem, mayhem and he can do it. Yeah, I thought the Riddler was great. You know, there's so many vibes from like the zodiac killer yeah. from like codes yeah. and the iconography and shout out to the actor paul dano great performance just so unhinged and it's like he just did a great job and yeah i mean i just can't say enough good good things about him i, I don't know how they're going to top it man like i don't know how they're going to top this whole villain arc because it was just great it was both personal and like trying to find out the next murder before it happens. And it was also large scale, like a, a bigger Batman movie where it's like, you got to save the city. And it managed to marry those two things very well. And the way he looked was great. It was just, and th- there's so many, I'm a huge fan of the show Mindhunter. Oh yeah. Um, And there's so many things that you learn about serial killers in that show that like you see in this version of Riddler. Like the way that he, you know, is just standing in the room at the beginning, just waiting to hit the guy. And then how when he hits him, it is just such a violent, crazy, frantic moment. When up to that point, point, it felt so calculated. Mm -hmm. But then as soon as it starts, it's so chaotic, almost needlessly so. But that's realistic. And then the way that he's at... Goosebumps, that first... Oh my God, Mm -hmm. that first yell... (laughs) <laughs> yeah. and then the way that he's at the funeral and it's like i i knew it's like when they talk about the funeral like he's gonna be there and then mm-hmm. bruce says oh i'm going because serial killers like to be that's so like yep and he's there and what's even better about um the riddler is that the riddler knows he's going to be there and knows they're going to be looking for him there so he's again a step ahead and it's just so so good and I love just the the unhingedness 
you know, when you see him talking in his videos, he's just so crazy. And then when you see him talking to his followers, he's like a exactly. YouTuber like us. Sorry. Mm. Hey and then guys, what's him, going on? <laughs> exactly like followers. That. Oh, uh, thanks, uh, one, two, three, uh, Star Lord for subscribing. Uh, yeah. Thanks for the comments and the likes, guys. Let's keep it going. <laughs> I know great. it's amazing. And then you just see him in the cell, and again, it's just he's he's just crazy. And then he gets so upset at the end, and you know the way that he's playing with. I know you're Bruce Wayne, but let's not. I'm not gonna give give it away. So uh, that that's crazy because some people. Are, I've heard some people talk about that, like, oh, yeah, well, it looks like the Riddler didn't know that he was Bruce Wayne. Like, no. my, the way I understood it, he definitely knows it's Bruce Wayne and just so doesn't obvious. want to. Yeah, right? He just, he, he thinks it's going to be more fun if he doesn't tell everybody he's Bruce Wayne, right? Well, Everybody agree? My, my question, though, I don't is, think so. is, like, on the wall, he has all the Batman stuff, Bruce Wayne there, and it's like, is he the Batman? And then he, I mean, he says his name while he's being videotaped. How many people now are going to like, w like one, like, I, I thought that that was going to be a bigger problem. They were going to show in the end mm -hmm. of like, oh no, now people know that I'm Bruce Wayne. Like he even got scared. I feel like in the room, at least from my perspective. He did. Yeah. Because they do the shot where Batman looks at the camera and sees that it's recording. Mm -hmm. No, but even yeah. in the in the apartment, yeah, same thing. Where he's, he's, he's like he's yeah. waiting for something to pop up to say Bruce Wayne is the Batman. It was yeah. like I was scared with him, and it's like is everybody just so stupid that it, we're not going to talk about this? The answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it, the it, logic that the movie is trying to use is that the reason why all that those connections were there is because one, he wants to mess with Batman. And when you watch that in tandem with the recording of the interrogation, he thinks he's Batman's sidekick almost, or he thinks that they're hmm. team they're teaming up, and that he wanted to kill Bruce Wayne, and that those two things are separate in people's hmm. minds, even though we know that Batman and the Riddler know that they're not separate, that they're completely connected. Yeah, see, it... It's kind of weak. It makes... Riddler just is such is so far ahead of everybody else in this movie that I I honestly did feel like he knew the whole time especially especially during that little jail scene time but then as soon as he said like he's like that's the only one that I didn't get yeah. you know I it kind of makes me realize that it's like you know it's like maybe no, he knows. maybe there, maybe he doesn't because there the hush storyline. Yeah, the hush oh, really? storyline <laughs> is when he figures it out. Um, my other big thing with this movie, and that I've heard a lot of people complain about, and I, I can see where they're coming from, is not, and it has like it's a huge tangent on just the topics, but more of taking the movie as a whole, okay. and it's that we've gotten quite a few movies of batman in our lifetime and we've had like no interaction with the bat family like mm -hmm. at all for decades and it's, it's kind batman of disappointing yeah and that's like that's kind of disappointing because those characters are fantastic and mm -hmm. the biggest thing is they enhance batman and i was thinking about that i was like okay Robert Pattinson's young enough that we could see them in future films. But for me in particular, I kind of don't want to. I don't see this Batman working well with a bad family dynamic. And that could change. They could write an amazing story and the actor could play amazing. But I, I saw it so great of a fit with Ben Affleck as Batman that I hope we see that story with him if he's still going to do anything. See, I feel like Robert Pattinson's Batman is young enough to the point where, you know, if he steps into that Bruce Wayne persona, then maybe a Bat family can happen because his dynamic with Dick Grayson is just so flawless in the comic books and then TV series that we've seen so far. And... 
I'm like, it would make sense that this young version of him would be a father figure to a lot of other younglings out there that he makes into the Bat family, not to be confused with Anakin Skywalker. Um, and you know what? At the end of the movie where Selena says, like, you're going to get yourself killed, like, that made me be like, oh, like, maybe he's going to figure out that maybe he's going to get killed and someone has to carry out his legacy of being the Batman, so create the Bat family and see which one is better off. <laughs> that like that would have been a better way of like starting something out maybe in a future film. I I kind of here's my thing. One they kind of showed it in this film like his I don't know the wording for it, but just like with the kid, the kid whose father died How in the very beginning. With them? They, yeah, the sympathy that he had for him is he was he wasn't just like oh man that sucks it was like he looked at the kid like he was looking at himself and so it's like i felt like i could see him taking in a child and trying to like take care of that child because maybe nobody else wanted to take care of that child like i got those vibes i don't know if he could you know the bat family i don't know if he could have all of that this character so far but it could change and i also I, I, it made me really wonder if, with this kid that they kept showing, if he's going to be significant in the future, because it wasn't just one time that they showed him, or even twice. At the beginning they showed at the this end. kid, like, three or four times. Oh, and at the funeral. So it was very significant. Again, it could have been the significance of just, like, he was seeing himself in this kid, or this kid could be somebody in the future. I don't know, but th those were my thoughts on, like, on that topic, I guess. And also a little side note there, uh, the kid at the beginning also has a red ninja suit on with a, with a uh, katana. So uh, obviously this kid has some sort of training. So what do you think though, Nate? I think you're high. <laughs> About what? A Halloween About the kid having training? He could be in or karate that he's, or something. Or, yeah, he's like, yeah. Yeah. It was a Halloween costume, bro. It was That's, Halloween okay, that night. Sure. But it's, <laughs> it's, I'm saying it's more of like an Easter egg more than anything. Sure. Yeah, that kind of made me think of Damian Wayne a little bit, honestly. Yeah, I don't think that kid's going to show up again. I think that was just to be, I think, yeah, it was maybe to sow the seeds for future Dick Grayson and also just to be like, orphans really mess with Bruce Wayne. Like, they really, because he's an orphan. And I mess with Bruce Wayne all the time. I'm done with the DCEU. Like, I'm there for Flash, I'm but like, I'm just. I, I'm done with just their look and their feel and their direction and their mess. I'm done with Snyder's stuff. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to see Ben Affleck back. You know, what? he had he had his chance, and I think this is better. This is a more this interesting universe. Mm -hmm. This is a more entertaining, meaningful, deep Batman. Sure. This is a smarter Batman. Sure. It's like, so mm -hmm. I don't want this crappier dollar store version of batman at this point that's how good this batman is to me that it makes the batman that we got in justice league and batman versus superman look even worse than he kind of already was mm -hmm. so and i understand what you're saying about i don't see this batman having a bat family and i get what you're going through like he's very like individual it doesn't mm -hmm. seem but, like, he warmed up to Catwoman so fast, bro. Mm -hmm. So fast. So it's like a Batgirl-type storyline where it's uh, a teenage girl that is just Batgirl without him. And then he finds her and mentors her after. I see that happening pretty easily. And then I also see a Tim Drake storyline happening pretty easily where it's like a genius kid that figures out that he's Bruce um, you know, and then also depending on how dark they want to go, I could see him going just like, "Hey, here's this orphan," and Bruce is just an ab abusive father. Basically, he loves Dick, but he's like, "You need to train every day. You need to be awesome so like that Titans. you can help me." Which is forget Titans, which is like, um, <laughs> God, it's the comic run that came after the Long Halloween, which I am so. It's like Dark Victory or something. Mm. Um, which which is that runs introduction of Dick Grayson. Um, 
but I don't know what they're going to do with with um, the, the suit because he can't look like Robin, not in this universe. Yeah, exactly. And My guess. I don't, so the, we're, we're getting kind of close to the end of this podcast. And like, this is kind of where I wanted to like cement my, where I stand on this film is with the last thing I want to bring up is the Joker. And I felt like I loved the Riddler. The Joker was just felt so flat for me. I don't I, care I, I, at I agree. all about the Joker. Yeah. And so with that in mind, I really, really like this Batman. But for me, it's kind of like one of those comic books that you pick up and it's a standalone graphic novel and you're like, man, that was great. And you set it down and there's nothing else. There's no sequel. There's no anything. Like That's kind of where I sit with the Batman. I love this movie. I think it's so unique and it's uh, incredible that it is so unique. It does a lot of things really well. But I kind of just wanted to leave it like that. I don't really want to see a sequel. I'm kind of happy with what I got, and I kind of want to leave it there. But what well, do you? Too think? bad, Winston, because they approved two more. I know, I know. I don't know and if then... they'll do the rest as as well as they did this one, or as, I know. as stylistic as they did this one. I think they'll definitely do it as stylistically, but I agree. I feel like Joker did nothing for me. His laugh kind of sucked. We only got a tiny bit of his look, so I can't really judge his look. But what we did see of his look didn't really get me that much. So I'm really hoping that if they do go with a Joker storyline next movie, they they just have to do better. And I'm worried because it's hard. Like, this Riddler was so stinking good. And I don't know how they're going to make the next villain even better. You know? So... That's really my only worry, how they're going to make the next villain better. Because if they get Joker and he's just as good as Riddler, it feels cheap. Because Riddler is an awesome villain, but Joker is supposed to be the end-all, be-all. And if Riddler feels as good as as Joker, then it feels like it's cheapening the, the Riddler. Or the Joker, I mean. So that's kind of the only thing I'm really w- worried about with the next movies. Is just, man, how are they going to top this villain? Because he was so good. He was so real feeling. And he just did great. So, yeah. See, I think that they're going to go with the same scheme that they have so far of it. Because you were right when you said, you know, the Riddler kind of gives us a Zodiac Killer kind of vibe to it. And I really hope that they take inspiration from other, like, real life, like, serial killers. Serial killers. That way, you know, there's... There's definitely someone out there that's probably like the Joker. And, you know, if they can make it feel like that, it wouldn't it wouldn't feel cheap to me. It would feel perfect. Because so far what we have of DC villains, all of those feel very, very flat to me so far. Granted, I didn't see Justice League because, you know, it kind of sucks, even the trailer suck. But still, like, what we've seen of the you know even batman films so far like <sighs> christian bale's dark knight joker is the only villain in this dc universe that i actually felt kind of fear for because he made it feel so good and so realistic and you know i i if they can i feel like if they can make it like that it would be great i feel like if i was to make a prediction for what they were might do with the Joker. One, they might not do very much with him, and I think he might always just kind of be that background. And I feel Two, like that's a really good call. Yeah. I feel like no. I feel like if you're not gonna have him, they don't show him again. Yeah. Don't show him true. at all again if Two, you're not gonna go all in with him. If they do bring him in as more of a character, I feel like they need to play more into the mental illness part of it. Like, really playing with his mind, really playing with, like, and I don't think that he would be the only villain in that movie. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I think like, I agree I with that. Like, I feel like it would be, like, in this one, it was, it was basically just Riddler as, like, in terms of, like, Batman villains. Um, 
I don't think I think he would be a driving force behind a lot like a few other characters. I don't think he's it's only going to be just like him and Batman. I I kind of I, I agree with Winston. I don't care about this Joker. I'm kind of done seeing Joker. Like I I kind of am. Like I'm I I was at the point where I was done seeing the Batman or like Batman not the Batman, but Batman because We've seen him so many times in so many different ways. And I think that they did just a really good job of showing just such a different version of him that it feels really fresh. And it makes me excited again for superhero movies because I just haven't, I just personally haven't been that excited for any, like anything in general. But I was super excited for this movie and I'm really happy with, with how it went. Um, do you did you guys know who plays Joker? Did you guys see who it was? Yeah, from Eternals. Yeah, it's the dude from Eternals. Uh, it's the kid who has the tribe in Druid? Mexico. Is that his name? Druid? Yeah, the tribe. In, oh, like the all the his perfect little community. Yeah, yeah, he, he like can. Yeah, he can brainwash people. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I felt like. Um, because you couldn't tell who it was like in the movie, like you, you'd have to like, look it up. Um, Mm -hmm. my perspective on that was that they probably did that because they're not sure exactly what they want to do with the Joker and who they would want to play because they could easily switch out and a different actor and Uh, like Barry Kagan, Coogan, something like that. Sorry. Yeah. No, you're good. Um, I just felt like, okay, they just don't really know what exactly they want to do with him. And they probably just weren't sure at that point if they were going to get a sequel or not. So, uh, I don't know. I, I wouldn't have high hopes for what they would do with the Joker. I just would go into it with, like, no expectations. And, Speaking of which... Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, another headcanon thing that I kind of had is that gang that we see at the very beginning. We want the white faces and everything that that is the Joker gang that Batman already took down. And the reason why he had half a face is because he wasn't fully, fully initiated into the gang, mm-hmm. which yep. is really cool, but they never said anything about it. That might be um, the Ace gang, actually, because it was black and white. But they had the smiles, bro. They were black and white, bro. Well, something has already happened with Joker. He's already in mm-hmm. Arkham Asylum. So, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, we've seen something of him. Well, they've seen something of him already. I wish they talked about if it was if Batman was involved. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, what do you guys think the Rotten Tomato score so far is for this? It's the prices. I mean, the Rotten Tomato score is right. Eighty-seven. Eighty-nine. I was gonna say eighty-nine too. I'll just be different and go ninety-one. <laughs> Eighty-five. Eighty-five. That's like that worse than I thought it was going to be. That was close. <laughs> I think a lot of people don't like how long it is, which yeah. I'm fine with it. Yeah, as I felt like him. you were getting something every 10 to 15 minutes. And See, and I, I, will, I will put Endgame above this movie, definitely, because Endgame felt very fluid in it. Like, it didn't feel like it took long. This film, like, it, it felt like it took a while. I know it, it dragged. Did. I for... felt it, but it didn't bother me. It, Sorry, Kayla. No, it's good. It dragged for a lot of people. A lot of people were like, oh my gosh, it was so slow. It was boring. From my perspective of the movie, I was able to appreciate all of the scenes, like even the ones that felt dragged. It just added to the aesthetic like of the movie itself. It could have been tightened up. They probably could have shaved off 20 minutes or so, but... You just have to you just have to go into it and try to appreciate it for what it is. I mean, it's supposed to be like a noir movie and they mm-hmm. drag. Like that's kind of what they do. Like they're very just like, you know, slow walk and all this, yeah. this stuff. So it makes sense. And people are just gonna be picky about everything anyway, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah. I think the reason why I didn't like how long it took it was just because how late in night it was when we were watching it. But other than that, like yeah, there were only like a few scenes that were just that were just a little too long for it for its actual worth. But you know, it, yeah, they could have taken about twenty minutes off, and it would have been perfect. 
last headcanon thing for me is that his bat logo mm-hmm. is made out of the gun that killed his parents. Is that what it is? It's very I don't mechanical. know where it is. How did he get that gun? Don't know. Evidence. The villain He's dropped it and then he bought it from evidence. Don't know, dude. But I'm just saying, it looks like it has clips on it, like a gun. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, it makes sense for this Batman to have something so close to him that always reminds him of his parents and that incident that happened. Maybe he's always holding on to that trauma. So that's another headcanon thing for me. Don't know if it's true. Um, do you guys are you guys ready to rank? Yes, I'm ready to score, not rank. Sorry, yeah, sorry, had too much Marvel revisited. Uh. <laughs> Nate, where do you, a 1 out of 10, what would you score the Batman? It's a 9. Really? It's a 9. It didn't, it didn't got me emotionally in any way. It's a 9. But it just looks so good. The music's so good. The set design's so good. The acting's so good. There's so few convenient moments. So it's like when they just do so many things right, it's like I, it's hard to find places to, to take it away from. I think the only reason why it doesn't get a 10 is because of that. Like it didn't blow me away, like super blow me away in any at any point. But it was just so good across the board. Kaylin, what would you score The Batman? I never want to give anything a 10 out of 10, but I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to give it a 10 out of 10 for me because I really liked it. I'm very, like, I'm holding myself back on a lot of things, like, in just in in the podcast, but also just talking to other people, you know, because I don't want to be, like, crazy. But, like, my inner child is very happy with it, with this movie, and so I'd, I'd give it a 10 out of 10 for myself. I know it doesn't deserve a 10 out of 10, but it's 10 out of 10 for me. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Danny. You know, this has been like the best DC movie that I've seen in a long time, but it still doesn't deserve, I feel like it doesn't deserve higher than Nate. Okay, so eight. I... I'm really in between 8 and 8.5. I think 8.5 is what I'm going to have to go with. I love this movie, but I still have a lot of issues with this movie. Like, there's so many things that this movie does right, and I feel like what it does right, it does really right. But there's those other little things that I'm like, I don't really like that, you know? And there's a lot of things to absorb, a lot of things that I have to, like, I wish I had more explanation for, but it already was a long movie, so I can, like... You know, it's just I'm struggling with all these different things. And maybe watching it a few more times will uh, will change that. But as of now, an 8.5 for the Batman. It's going to be on cool. HBO Max pretty soon in April. Oh, will it? Oh, nice. Yeah. I have to watch that on an OLED. Oh, Next month? God. I think it's April 24th. I'm pretty sure. I, I, I think so. Guaranteed. OLED. Guaranteed. When that, when that goes on HBO, I'm watching The Dark Knight and then The Batman side by side. I have to. So one playing while the other one's playing too? Like no, both of no. them playing at the same time? And then I watch the side? other one. Ah, no. ah, okay. Well, you have three monitors, so just I check do. It. I do. I'm, see, I'm looking at you on monitor two right now. There's one right here and one right there. That's an OLED. <laughs> Suck it, Danny. But until next time, thank you for joining us for this uh, podcast that was probably way too long that you probably st- turned off a long time ago. But that is our review of The Batman. What did you think? Leave a comment in under this video. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Yeah, tell, t- tell a friend. You know, if you have somebody that just can't get enough Marvel content, comic book content, movie content, you're like, hey, there's right these in. guys. They made a video talking about it. They have all these videos. Like, if you want, watch them. Like, just do that. Just to, if you know somebody that's like, Marvel is my life, or comics are my life, Marvel or is my life. these movies are my life. Like, hey, here's just I another like thing. You guys here's respond. An- another thing you can talk about. Yeah, you guys respond to comments too. So feel free to criticize yeah. all of our opinions. <laughs> of course, we will we love definitely it. burn yeah. you in the comment. Yeah. I mean, answer in the comments. Danny won't do anything because he's. <sighs> Not I'm not a co-founder of this damn damn straight. Drink never some will water, be. Danny. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Go have another kid. I will. Thank you. Until next time, I'm Vengeance. Stay frosty. Give him the ice.